Vice Chair of Court, esteemed guests and colleagues, today is a very special graduation ceremony as we commence proceedings by installing our sixth University Chancellor, Dr. Anne-Marie Imaphodon, MBE. For hundreds of years, chancellors have served as global ambassadors for universities, helping to promote and advance their priorities nationally and internationally. The role of the Chancellor involves formal and ceremonial duties, such as the capping of new graduands, as our Chancellor will do for the very first time today. In challenging economic and political times, the ceremonial and symbolic leadership of the Chancellor is more important than ever. This afternoon, it is my absolute honour and privilege to present today our sixth University Chancellor, Dr. Anne-Marie Imaphodon, MBE. And we are delighted to be joined by a number of Anne-Marie's friends and families for this momentous occasion, including her husband, Parminda, mother, Anne, father, Chris, and many other members of the family too numerous to mention. From child genius, to one of the UK's most influential women in technology and a major advocate of diversifying talent in science, technology, engineering and mathematics, Anne-Marie truly embodies our university's values of confidence, creativity, integrity and responsibility and our, universe, and our mission for the common good advocating for equality and in inclusion in all that she does. Born in London in 1989, Anne-Marie is a prodigy in every sense of the word. She discovered an aptitude for mathematics and technology early on, passing two GS GCSEs and speaking six languages by the age of 10. At 11 years old, she was the youngest girl ever to pass A-level computing, and aged just 20, one of the youngest to gain a master's degree in mathematics and computer science from Oxford University. This is also after studying at John Hopkins University in the United States on a scholarship that she won when she was aged just 13. She went on to forge an enviable career holding positions for corporate giants such as Goldman Sachs, Hewlett-Packard, Deutsche Bank and Lehman Brothers, before combining the wealth of experience gained in business and her pioneering spirit to co-found STEMETS in 2013, an award-winning social initiative that is dedicated to inspiring and promoting the next generation of young women in science, technology, engineering and mathematics, STEMETS has reached more than 65,000 young people across the UK, Ireland and Europe to date. As well as being a social, social entrepreneur and trailblazer in business, mathematics and technology, Anne-Marie is a sought-after presenter and author. In 2021, she began a run as temporary arithmetician for 60 episodes on Channel 4's Countdown, the world's longest running TV game show. And in 2022, she released She's in Control, a guidebook for women to take back tech. Sitting on the boards of various organizations, Anne-Marie is particularly proud to be chair of UD Music Foundation, an Arts Council national portfolio charity bringing communities together through music education, black music and black music culture. I'm delighted we are joined by the, performance, by the performers of Flames Collective, part of UD Music, who will deliver a very special performance later on in the proceedings. And I heard them warm up earlier and they're really fantastic, so it's a fantastic thing to look forward to later on. In recognition of her influence and achievements, Anne-Marie has received a host of accolades, which include an MBE in 2017 for her services to young women and the STEM fields, 
She was, she was named the UK IT Industry and British Computer Society's Young IT Professional of the Year in 20, 2013, and in 2020, the UK's Most Influential Woman in Technology by Computer Weekly, the same year that she was appointed a NATO 2030 Young Leader. Along with the many industry honours that she's received, Anne-Marie has been recognised with honorary doctorates from a large number of UK universities, including Open University, Kent, Bristol, Coventry, Royal Holloway, University of London and Bath, and with an honorary fellowship at Keble College, Oxford. In 2017, we were absolutely thrilled that Anne-Marie could add Glasgow Caledonian to the list when she accepted an honorary degree from our university. Since then, she has gone on to become a great champion of our students. When you meet Anne-Marie, you can't help to be captivated by her vibrant entrepreneurial flair, her passion for equality and diversity, and her commitment to making STEM an accessible space for everyone. I know she will be an exceptional ambassador for our university, helping to drive forward our commitment to equality, inclusion, and employability. As Scotland's largest and leading modern university, she will help to amplify our ambitions, promoting our institutional priorities nationally and internationally. And importantly, she will serve as a figurehead who truly embodies the common good, inspiring our students and alumni, our staff, our industry partners, and the wider university community. Vice Chair of Court, it gives me great pleasure to invite you to install Dr. Anne-Marie Imaphidon as the sixth Chancellor of Glasgow Caledonian. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, by the authority of the University Court, I have great pleasure in now installing you, Dr. Anne-Marie Maffedon, MBE, as the sixth Chancellor of Glasgow Caledonian University. I have the honour to vest in you the authority of Chancellor and the responsibilities of this high office. In accepting this office, you undertake to promote the well-being of the university and to keep and preserve its statutes, liberties, rights and privileges. Many congratulations and we look forward to what will undoubtedly be a most distinguished chancellorship. Vice-Chancellor, Vice-Chair of Court, Deputy Vice-Chancellors, Vice-Principals and Pro-Vice-Chancellors, Members of Court and Senate, Distinguished Guests, Colleagues, Family, Friends, Graduands and EA. It is my utmost honour and privilege to welcome you to this momentous occasion in this iconic building in this tremendous city. Today, we celebrate the hard work of our graduates, our staff, and the support systems that surround you. I'm personally excited, as so many of my own family members across four generations have traveled from far and wide to join today too. <laughs> Glasgow Caledonian University, this is your chancellor speaking. Congratulations, everyone. We made it. Pause. Take a look at where you are and take a look at who you're with. Breathe it in, maybe even take a mental photograph. Many could barely have dreamt of a day like this. The hard work, 
the ups, the downs, and the in-betweens have all contributed and built to this very moment. Today, we follow in the footsteps of many GCU alumni, chancellors, and staff. What is now Scotland's largest and leading modern university actually dates back 149 years to 1875, when the founding institution, the Glasgow School of Cookery, provided formal home economics, textile and finance education to the women of Glasgow and beyond. Now in this concert hall, we've all genders across the student body and the roster of subjects represented today deviates from home economics. But so much of that ethos of equality, equity and common good for Glasgow and beyond lives on. This is why as an East Londoner who loves maths, tech, and helping people, I feel at home here. It's incredible to see what happens when people come together to learn, research, and solve problems as you have done in the past few years. And it's even more exciting to think about how the knowledge and experiences that you've gained here will be applied beyond these walls in the decades to come. And as you go on from today's celebrations, it will be important to keep the GCU ethos in mind. Some advice from me. Yes, you have a new certificate. No, you shouldn't stop learning. The great mathematician Dr Gladys West once said, keep learning, never stop learning. And today signifies a milestone, not an end to new knowledge, research or problems to solve. Make a conscious effort to continue hearing and seeking new perspectives, as well as connecting the dots across disciplines. It's not said often enough that the best innovation comes from cross-disciplinary approaches and diverse inputs. We wouldn't even have the word scientist if Scottish writer, mathematician, and polymath Mary Somerville hadn't turned up amongst her men of science peers to contribute new ideas. And she went on to tutor Ada Lovelace, the original programmer. Secondly, the knowledge you have isn't just for you. It's for the common wheel, as we call it up here in Glasgow, uh, but also known as the common good. You have a legacy that is built each day in your decisions, priorities, and efforts across your growing sphere of influence. Be mindful of the voice and the opportunity that you have to change things for the better when you think of others as well as of yourself. And whether they admit it or not, there are people who listen to you and look up to you. How are your actions ensuring that they have something good to, ha to take away? Walk the walk more than you talk the talk. So many of the weird and wonderful things that I've encountered in my career thus far have come from giving and creating for others, not for myself. From hosting on national television, to traveling to far off destinations, to even being stood here as your chancellor, all of it has come from wanting to help others. Finally, as evidenced by the poor recognition of beautiful Scottish accents by today's supposed industry standard voice recognition technology. And if any of you don't know what I'm talking about, there's a fantastic video online of two Scots in a voice activated elevator. <laughs> Spoiler alert, they go nowhere. Even in today's modern times, the work to be done on equality remains unfinished not just in technology and STEM, and also STEAM, which incorporates the arts, where I spend most of my time working towards social justice and equity, but in our legal, educational, healthcare systems, and beyond. Recognizing, celebrating, and enabling a diversity of success in all of its forms, no matter the gender, upbringing, or physical ability, will take intentional actions from all of us. We all benefit from that progress in the long run. So, the future is in our collective hands. As for today, let the celebrations continue. 
Welcome to the Glasgow Caledonian University alumni family. I promise to serve you all well as your chancellor. And it now gives me great joy and delight for the first time to officially open today's graduation ceremony. Thank you.